All right. Okay, says we're live. Okay. Awesome questions. How do you find at the beginning of your destiny and what do you look for? Yeah, it is slower. It's like it keeps freezing on the phone. So I wonder if they're going to fix that shortly because it's definitely not the way that it should be working. The Apple is known for working anyway, I think is more to the point. So Facebook Live, Instagram Live. Thank you for joining me live today. I'm feeling really cold to jump on. So here I am and talk about trusting your destiny. Facebook Live is now working, yay, um, because I've just tried about five times to get on Facebook Live. And that is just one example of showing you how to trust your destiny. My Facebook Live wasn't working. I had to try it like, what is it, four or five times to make it work. And if you really want something to work, do you give up? I could have gone, oh, sorry, not meant to do it today. I'm walking away from it. No, <laughs> right? It just took me three, four to five times to work, get Facebook Live to work. And it is about knowing and trusting that if you're meant to do something, that you keep going until it happens. Yeah? Now, the other thing, if you've got any questions about your destiny, Facebook Livers joining me, um, please let me know in the comments. I've got a couple here from Instagram. So how do you find the beginning of your destiny? It is about putting one foot in front of the other and not stopping until you get there. Now, the tricky thing, the curious thing about this is that you may have an idea of what you're meant to do, right? You might know, for example, that you're meant to help people. Now that is very, very broad, okay? Yeah, it's very broad. All right, I'm supposed to help people. What exactly, yeah? Now you might not know all the details. You might not know, you know, all the little details or what it looks like. You might have an idea and you might be like, oh, you might get an idea and you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's what I'm meant to do and you'll do that and you'll get excited about it and all that sort of thing. And then something will happen and you'll be like, fuck, I don't even know if I'm supposed to be doing this anymore, right? And the thing about that is that when you get to that point, like say for example, I don't know if I'm meant to be doing this anymore. The thing that I want you to be aware of, right, is that everything that you've done up to this point has meant to have happened to get you to that point, one for experience, skills, knowledge, um, awareness from yourself, personal growth, and other people being aware of what you do. Um, plus the other thing of, you know, like you can, it's like everything that happened in the past and where you got to is meant to, you know, it's like, it's almost like I'm trying to, I'm hearing or trying to get the word in my head. It's, I'm feeling it intuitively. What is that? It's almost like going to school. I'm hearing Lightworker University, but it's kind of not that, but it is, but it, it's almost like, you know, intuitive life school. I don't fucking know, right? But it's like, you know, everything that you're meant to do and you do do, you know, courses that you are drawn to learning, um, skills and you know, that sort of thing. And I am talking about the healing profession right now and helping people in the healing profession, um, alternative healing, spiritual healing, whatever you want to call it. I am talking about that in particular because, but you can apply it to anything because every single course that you've ever taken has led you to this moment right now to, to get you to that point and that skill level so that you can move on to the next bit, right? And when you said there, Charlie, um, you know, you said, how do you find the beginning of your destiny? Put one foot in front of the other. Um, because when you start taking that first step, the next bit of information will come. When you take the next step, the next bit of information will come. For me personally, when I don't know what to do and I sit down and I look at my list and I go, okay, I'm going to do that thing. So I sit down and I do that thing. Now, people talk about not having lists and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm giving you an example if you're so stuck about what to do. But you take that first thing that jumps out at you off your list and you're like, right, I'm going to do that. And you start doing that. And what happens for me personally is that I'll start doing that and then I'll get ideas. I'll be like, oh, I need to do that. And I'll jump on and I'll have about 20 to 30 tabs open across my computer. And if somebody comes in and looks at that, they'll be like, what the fuck are you doing? 
And it's like, I'll do that. And then I'll, and then, you know, and then when I start doing that, I'll get another idea and I'll be like, oh, I need to do that. So I'm doing like about 10 things at once, quite literally. And then what happens is that I'll see that, I'll, and then eventually I'll come back to this thing that I started with. And I'm like, fuck, I really needed to do all of that to finish this thing. Yeah. So, you know, what do you look for in the beginning of your destiny and how do you, you know, what do you look for? It's like you look for the next thing and you take that step and then you see the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. You might have heard about this, you know, like you might have heard this over and over and over again. However, if you're listening to this, this is your reminder that if you're stuck or you don't know what to do, um, and I'm going to talk more about trusting in your destiny in a moment and how you actually know what your destiny is is that when you start taking the first step, you are showing the next bit of information. Now, that little example that I gave you from taking that thing off my list and having, you know, 50 tabs open and doing 10 things at once that lead me back to that point, you could apply that to not just one task that you do in a day, but you could imp uh, apply that to your week or your life right? And you will see that you did this one thing today or whenever it was because you felt like that was what was right for you in that moment in time. And you did that and you trusted that. And then you're like, well, that doesn't feel right anymore. So then you went over here and you did this thing in your life for several weeks or several months. And then you're like, well, that doesn't feel right anymore. So then you did that. And then you're like, oh, I see now that I had to go and do that. And I had to go and do that to get here and without that I wouldn't have been here now so sometimes you get and I talk about this all the time with the intuition sometimes you get the understanding or the the reason why you intuitively are called to do something and sometimes you don't sometimes you get it at the end um, and sometimes you don't most of the time you do get it at the end but we can't can't count on that yeah and it's about trusting the next step and the next step and the next step and trusting that you get that that you will get that bit of information especially when you feel blocked and when I wrote about this this morning it was very much that you know it's like what I was getting the image of is like the the beaver for some reason I'm gonna look at that animal spirit guide in a minute the beaver and you know the dam with all the sticks yeah it all clicks into place yeah exactly Sandy so it's like like um, the sticks and the dam that the beavers built <laughs> um, you know and when you're blocked it's like that but when you sit down and you start that first task even if you're like oh and it's kind of like it is a discipline to turn up and do the things you know you need to do even if you don't feel like them yeah like gym or taking care of your health or the next bit in your business yeah when you actually sit down to do that thing and that dam wall with all the sticks from the beaver that one stick will move away and the water will start spurting out and then another stick will loosen and that will come out and then another bit of water starts spurting out and then all of a sudden yeah and that's what I'm talking about all clicks into place like you said Sandy and it's like all the the ideas start flowing and you're like oh this and this and there's your energy flow yeah so it's not about waiting for the inspiration to come through yeah it's like some people are like oh I'm not inspired today or you know it's kind of like and I spoke about this in my private group too, you know, like when you're working in your business, you know, some people don't like scheduling posts, some people do, right? And it's like, well, how do you schedule posts? Um, and, you know, when you're not feeling inspired and how do you know what to post, you know, in three days time or something? It's like, again, it comes back to trust. Do you trust in your inspirational flow? Do you trust in your dam? that yeah that when you sit down and do one thing one stick will move and then another bit will start to loosen yeah and then it will all start flowing through yeah when you sit down to turn up and turn up to do the thing that you know you're meant to do which is usually the thing you have most resistance to it starts flowing yeah it's this intuitive flow that flows through yeah and the other thing you're welcome Charlie the other thing I wanted to talk about um what did you say how to how do you find the beginning of your destiny you take the next step what do you look for? You just keep trusting that that dam will open. The other thing I wanted to talk about, oh, I kind of have already covered it, but it's like, you know, how do you... Okay, so when you don't know what you're meant to do, you know, like how do you, how do you know or what do you look for? It's like, well, you just turn up. It's usually you've got some kind of idea that you're meant to help people, right? So I did give that example of... Um, which is a very broad thing. Yeah, I meant to help people. However, 
you might not know the s specifics of that again until you take that step. So like for my personal example, I did the Lightworker Practitioner Training in 2005 and then that kind of started me on. I'm like, yeah, I meant to do this and this and this. And while I kind of have been doing that all along, it's, you know, I guess it's maybe we want to call it shape shifted or it's changed. And then I did yoga teaching. So I did, you know, my level one and then several years later did my level two teacher training. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, yeah, I'm a yoga teacher and yeah, I'm a light yoga practitioner and yeah, I'm this. And the thing is, is that, like I said to you, you know, when you start taking those steps, the next thing is shown and the next thing is shown. And it might not be and you might get to a point you're like, well, I don't know what I'm meant to be doing anymore. What, what, I've done all this stuff and I still don't know what I'm meant to be doing. I don't, I don't know. But I tell you what, when you get to that point, when you've done so much stuff, it'll reach a particular point and it's almost like coming back to the dam analogy again. It's almost like you sit down and you do the thing and then the dam will start, the, the beaver's sticks will start disappearing and the flow will happen. And then you keep following that flow. And then all of a sudden you get to this next kind of dam wall almost and you're like, well, I've done all this stuff and I still don't know. And now I'm here again, so what's going on? Do you know what happens? You start taking that step because then the next damn wall will start, you know, that stick will start to loosen and, you know, and those sticks of the beaver's damn wall could be representative of certain personal development stuff that you need to do. It could be mental health and guidance. It could be um, complete life re-overhaul. It could be, you know, that could look like many different things. But when you start, you know, feeling that kind of damn wall and you're like, oh, and when you remember that if I just take the next step and just take the next step and just take the next step, you're going to get that, you know, momentum and flow happening, yeah? So... Um, oh yeah, and the thing that I wanted to say to that is, you know, when you've got, you know, when you get to that, say, second damn wall and you're like, oh my God, I've done all this stuff for so long, I will guarantee you that everything that you've ever done is meant to be for a reason, especially your training, your, your healing abilities and, you know, everything that you've learned to date has got a purpose, right? Especially if you resonate with being some sort of alternate healer, somebody who works with the light, um, someone who's an inspirational leader or a motivational person to, um, you know, teach people about consciousness in some way, shape or form, whether that is yoga or some other modality. Um, you know, I will guarantee you that everything that you are learning has got some kind of, um, what's a word, like stem or thread from a past life. And when you take that course and you relearn that this lifetime, it's almost like it puts another, um, I hear another notch under the belt, but another, uh, another level to that particular modality that you do because you're drawn to certain healing modalities because on some level you resonate with them and you're like, yes, this is what I meant to do. And you, you know, you get excited about it and you do it. And what that is doing is it's reactivating the part of you that already knows this stuff, yeah, that you've learned from a past life. However, in this lifetime, we're just putting this new, I guess, awareness of, you know, our current modern day society and, you know, that learning into that, yeah? So you've kind of got another dimension, another depth to it, yeah? Because innately you already know it or you wouldn't be drawn to that certain modality to learn that for yourself, yeah? Um, so I'm just going to look at Beaver. If it's even in here, I don't know if I've even looked at Beaver before. Um, surely Beaver's in here. So this is from the Animal Spirit Guides. Sorry, it's backwards. Um, Stephen Farmer. Okay, oh, very interesting, right? Very, very appropriate, of course. So Beaver says, this is a time for purposeful and directed activity not contemplation or procrastination. Hello, if you're watching this live stream, you're meant to hear this from Beaver. <laughs> um, balance your activities by providing time for resting and socializing with family and friends. So yes, we need to push ahead and get our stuff done, but it's not about just going at a bullet at a gate and kind of, you know, almost feeling like you've got everything scattered everywhere. And whilst I know that there is benefit to doing that at particular times, this message that comes through confirms the sense and the feeling that I've been getting around especially being a intuitive healer. And it, like I said, if you resonate with any of the modalities that I've been speaking about, it, it's your intuition and your internal guide that's guiding you to particular 
purposeful activities right now yeah it's like what the the sense that i'm getting and with my big personal changes as well it's like it's almost like i can't think what the proper name is but it's like you know it might be quote unquote slower or whatever but it's more impactful yeah it's more powerful or whatever the word is okay when you are actual purposeful and directive with what you know the messages that's coming through so that's beaver's strong message so if you just joined this live stream you might want to go and rewatch this um, so be especially aware of wasting time, energy, and resources on unimportant matters. Again, this is the very um, beaver analogy of the dam and the sticks that I've been talking about this entire live stream. You know, it's like if you don't know where to start, just turn up and start with the first thing because that little stick will move from the beaver's dam wall and the water will start flowing through. And even though you might not end up finishing that thing, but that opened the floodgate to go, oh, actually, this is what I need to do. And then the water, and it's like, oh, that's what I need to do. And you're like, oh, I really needed to get that done, right? And that's where you're trusting your intuition about the next step and the next step and the next step. So, you know, be especially aware of wasting time and energy on resources and unimportant matters. So if you know that you are procrastinating, sit down and do the thing on your list that you know you need to do for your life purpose, for your business, for your personal development, for yourself, um, and trust that that, you know, watching Netflix at this point in time is probably not where you're meant to be galled, right? For example. <laughs> Um, don't be busy for busy sake. Let your actions be focused and intentional. It's time to change your environment in a way that makes you feel more secure and comfortable. So if there is something that's bugging you in your environment that you haven't tended to yet, go and get that done too because that purposeful and directive energy allows you to shift that energy rather than that energy sitting there going, oh, I need to do that too, right? If you go and do that, that shifts that and that's like another damn wall being broken through, yeah? So, thank you for joining me live. I feel like it was really important to speak about that. So, I'll just wait for a moment to let me know if you've got any questions about trusting your destiny, okay? And while I wait to see if there's any questions that you've got around trusting your destiny, um, there's one last thing that I want to say. Ah, thank you. I appreciate that. So, I've got Instagram Live happening as well as Facebook Live. Um, Posh Realtor, thank you. Speaking of destiny, you've been appearing very happy lately. It shows it's been coming from within. Yeah, I've been doing some really digging deep um, changes for sure. Um, and all of that digging deep, you know, kind of was that damn wall for me. And I've been digging deep and floodgates have opened. And I can't, I can't I feel like I can't find enough time to put all these ideas into action, but it is happening. Um, so the one last thing that I wanted to say to that, thank you very much for saying that. Um, it's, it is about, you know, like when you get clear on your destiny, because, you know, when you said earlier, um, Charlie, about how do you find the beginning of your destiny or what do you look for? How do you know it's your destiny? You, like I said, you might not know the specifics of what you're meant to do, right? And you might not know for a long time why you're doing the certain things that you are. However, those things that you're doing at the time, you'd be like, oh yeah, this is what I'm meant to be doing. Then all of a sudden you're like, actually, I don't know there's something else. Like, you know, you might even feel that within yourself. There's something else or I don't know if I'm meant to be doing this anymore or that sort of thing. And it's getting to a point where you're then like, um, tuning in to, it's like, what was I saying there? You know, you might not know, okay, and then you get to that point and then it all becomes clear. So that everything that you've ever done to that point makes complete sense because sometimes you do things and you're like, oh, well, that was a waste of time or I don't know why I did that. But then it'll hit a particular point and you'll be like, so you post blogs and then delete them. I'm curious about that. Does that is that because you're scared of sharing that with the world, or what what is that? Is that because it feels right and then you delete them? Um, I'm wondering what you're needing there because I've got a lot to say to that. But I'm curious, you know, is that a fear thing that comes up for you, or it doesn't feel right anymore, so you don't post it anymore? And you know, I'm curious. I'm happy to help you with that, Magenta Goddess. That's an awesome. Um, well, it's not awesome, but it is. And I'm curious. I'd love to help you a bit more with that. Um, yeah, and like, that's the thing. You're like, oh, well, that was a waste of time. Yeah, ultimately, when you reach that particular point, you'll see that nothing was a waste of time. <laughs> nothing was a waste of time, yeah? 
Um, you think you're scared of sharing and maybe showing people what you really think. Okay, I got goosebumps just then saying that. So it's really like, you know, with that scared of sharing, reality is not everybody's going to like you. Everybody's got haters of some sort. And the more that you open your heart, the more especially you will, you know, and share that, I guess, the more you will, um, especially being an empath or sensitive being, you will feel people's judgments. But when you can really distinguish the clarity between that's their stuff and not yours, and that as a intuitive healer, as a leader, as a motivational person, your kind of job is to trigger people. And it's not that we do it on purpose. It's just that people get triggered all the time. People get triggered by the annoying shopkeeper or the person who cuts you off driving. People get triggered all the time. So when you can kind of keep that in mind, when you're sharing your content, know that people are probably going to get triggered. And what's also going to happen is you're also going to find people who fucking love you for opening your heart and sharing exactly what you do. And they will be, it's almost like food for their soul because you are stepping up and, you know, bearing all, so to speak. I'm getting goosebumps saying this. And people are, people are, I'm getting the word, people are dying to hear what you have to say, right? Quite literally, because their soul will be craving that um, alignment, resonance, because you write your blogs, because you're connected to some kind of source, and that's what your heart is feeling in that moment. And when you say, you know, you post blogs and then delete them, I'm getting goosebumps for you about this is really resonating truth. So when you post blogs and then delete them, like, because I was asking if, you know, what doesn't resonate anymore or that sort of thing. Like, when we, um, you know, post something, in a week's time, it might not be relevant at all, right? But for somebody, it will be. And it'll be like, you know, you know when you find a book, right? You find a book and you're like, when the fuck was this written? Like, 20 years ago. And you're like, it, it, this is what I need now. But it was written 20 years ago, <laughs> right? That's why when you post your blogs, know that somebody will come and they will thrive off it. Yeah? Because it's that sort of resonance for them. So I don't know if that's helped you at all. Um, and you know, when you're scared of sharing and maybe showing um, people what you really think, it is just trusting that you will find your tribe and your resonance. And by you kind of hiding your light or hiding who you are, you're going to keep attracting people who are hiding too right? So they might not be living in that truthfulness or living in their authentic self and being. Um, so, but when you start being more authentic, you're going to attract more authentic, yeah? Your vibration shifts and so do the people who you attract. The people who, you know, hate or, um, you know, um, get triggered or that sort of thing, you know, like I've got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of followers from a long time who still get triggered, you know, and I still get triggered by people who I follow, you know, and I love them. And it's, you know, any relationship goes through up and downs. And when we can remember that and, you know, if they're here for the long haul, then they will eventually work through their stuff or not and they will drop off or they will keep following you. So, it is about owning, you know, yourself. And when you said you think you're scared of sharing, it's almost like, you know, scared of sharing your light or scared of showing who you really are. So, you know, you could do a meditation around um, embracing your light because I know a lot of us are really good at embracing our dark and doing shadow work. Um, but we forget that we need to embrace our light side as well. Yeah. So that would be my recommendation for you is to do a meditation and embrace your light shadow as well as your dark. Yeah. All right, so that's my kind of um, thing about trusting a destiny today. So if you've got any more questions, please let me know. Um, if you've just jumped on this live stream, you might want to go and rewatch it because it is about trusting your destiny um, and trusting that even when you feel like you did something, you're like, oh, that was a waste of time. Maybe after a couple of other things, you're like, actually, I really needed to do that to get me to this point, yeah? So keep trusting that when you turn up and turn up and turn up, you are being led on your destiny if you keep trusting and taking those steps forward because when we stop doing that out of fear, that's when the wall will come up or the, the beaver's sticks will come and build that damn wall and it won't move, yeah? But when you just take the first little step, even if you feel scared, yeah? 
that's like what like I said the most thing that you need to turn up to is usually the thing that you've got the most resistance to like Beaver said in the message that I read out earlier um, it is about that purposeful you know um, deliberate intent um, of what you're meant to be doing right now rather than distractions like sitting down and watching Netflix or so and so yeah for example so turn up to do the most um, next thing yep you're very welcome Benjamin for sure um, so if you really want to put this into practice in a real deep meaningful way that really will bring out strong changes in you if you're procrastinating and you can't stop procrastinating and you really want to dismantle that beaver's damn wall that is in front of you and you can't seem to figure out how positive change is now open and we're starting I'm starting the first live stream next week actually so that is a bonus live stream if you get in early so if you really want to make these shifts and changes to anchor them in and actually create this like positive change means for it to stay long lasting like you know how you can you know yes I'll do this course and implement these changes and nothing fucking it's like works for a little bit and then it fucking goes away again it's like this positive change that I'm feeling called to teach is the long lasting tapping into the shit that you hear about that people make a wish and it comes true this is what positive change is all about so i'll post the link in the comments if you've got any questions please pm me otherwise the details are all on the page we start next week so remember keep it really real lots of love and i shall see you very soon namaste